Shantae's way here today. So I'm gonna actually give you guys tips and also some reasoning on why your hair is probably growing uneven and why you have breakage in some parts and then growth in other parts. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into all that today. So if you want to get some tips and reasoning on that, then just keep on watching. That I have so much experience with this because when I first went natural, if you go back on my channel, you'll even see older videos. I have a couple videos talking about this or I'll talk about it throughout my videos. Um, and some of my older videos. So when I first went natural, I of course was transitioning and I was dealing with different textures and I was dealing with a lot of um, hair issues, challenges, which included breakage and it included my hair growing very uneven. So I think it's important to tell you guys that when I was transitioning, my hair, instead of growing all over, it would grow like this. So what that means is in the back, my hair will be super short and then on the sides, my hair will be very long. So my hair would have length in the front and then in the back, when I would turn around, it would be like drawn up and I could not understand why. So let me go ahead and give you some reasoning on what the Diva Curl styles that I went to told me and also some things that I noticed myself just from being on the journey. So the first thing that my stylist told me when I went to the Diva Curl salon, she let me know that the reason that my hair was growing like this and my back was so much drier and so much more uneven than the rest of my hair was because I was not focusing my deep conditioning treatments on the back of my hair. So what she said is that when I deep conditioned my hair, most likely I was only deep conditioning like the front and then just slapping it on the back and not really paying attention, which she was completely right. When I first started to deep condition my hair, I didn't really pay attention to the back of my hair. I couldn't see it in the shower. And I just thought, oh well, whenever I put the water on my hair, the deep condition will go back there. Bad, bad mistake. Deep conditioning needs to be put throughout your hair. And if you put more on one side and not a lot on another side, then that side's not gonna be getting the nutrients that it needs. It's not gonna be um, nourished the way that the other side of your hair is. So that other side may tend to grow faster. You might have a little bit of issues out of the side that you don't put the treatment on as much. So first tip is to deep condition your hair in sections because at first I was not deep conditioning my hair in sections. I would just put the deep conditioner on and I'd be like, okay, we're done. But that is somewhat not the way to do it. So what you can do is you can take your hair and divide it into two and just put the deep conditioner on like that. Or you can actually section your hair into four sections, whichever one you feel that is best. I know that when I first found out that I wasn't giving a lot of attention to the back of my hair, I really didn't take time in sectioning my hair. Now that my hair is grown and I do have growth all over the place, <laughs> I do do it in two sections because I just know how to do it a lot better. But when I first started out, I really wanted the back of my hair to start to grow. So I did apply it in four sections and I did make sure that I really, really paid attention to the back and also paid attention to the front of my hair. Um, yeah, so that is reasoning and tip number one. All right, so number two, you may have been pulling your hair a lot when you're putting it into a ponytail. So when you put your hair in a ponytail, the parts that get the most stress on the hair or that is pulled the most is normally the crown of your hair, especially if you do um, straight back ponytails, or the back of your hair, especially if you do um, high up top knot type ponytails, and also the edges of your hair, um, which can be caused from any type of tight style that you do on a normal basis. So when I first went natural, um, before I went natural actually, I used to wear my hair and ponytails a lot. That was back when I would straighten my hair a lot. So I would wear my hair and a lot of ponytails. And whenever I went natural, it would show in my curls because some of my hair would be a lot shorter than the rest of my hair. So this was back when I was transitioning. So the first time I told you guys my hair was growing like this, that was like in the middle of my transition when I was starting to know my hair a little better. Well, what I'm talking about now when my hair was actually going through breakage was mainly in the very, very beginning of me going natural. I would notice that my hair was thinner in some spots and that um, a lot of my hair texture 
texture was a lot different and just needed a lot of help. So when you wear your hair in ponytails, like I said, you're putting a lot of stress on your hair and that can cause certain parts of your hair to break and then other parts it probably won't do much too because that part is not receiving the stress that the other parts are receiving and that will cause your hair to grow kind of uneven or it will just cause you to have a lot of breakage in one area and not much in another area which in turn will make your hair appear uneven. In that case you would just simply try to do a lot less stressless hairstyles. Another thing I wanted to point out is that when you are going through the transition stage or even if you big chop, you do want to make sure that when you're styling your hair, if you have shorter hair that you pull down. I mean, I personally learned that from my hairstylist that when I was doing my hair, I wasn't pulling down. So it would kind of like really, really draw up. And I will be asking her like, how could I get my hair to appear longer? Well, the thing is, is with natural hair, your hair is always going to appear shorter than what it actually is. Unless you have super heavy hair and your hair just is like more of a wavy type. If you have super curly hair, your hair is always going to appear a lot shorter than what it really is. And that's just something that comes with being natural. And honestly, take it as a compliment because when your hair draws up, you know that your hair is receiving more of the health benefits, your hair is getting healthier, but when your hair is more damaged, it's going to, you know, drag down, the straight pieces are gonna be pulling it down, and it's not going to be as um, vibrant, as, as plump as your hair would be when it's healthy. Although, I do understand also that it is very, you know, annoying to look at your hair and see that it is appearing sh more shorter than what it really is. You wanna show off your growth. So that's when the styling technique comes in of where you want to pull your hair down when you're putting your product on. So when you put your product on, you're going to put on your cream to style your hair and you're going to like finger comb your hair downward instead of like shingling it or curling it because those things are gonna add to um, your hair being a little more shorter looking. And also when you're styling your hair, don't just pull down on the front. I see, I know with me, a lot of times I would just pull down on the front and I would be like, okay, for my back, I would just be like, I wouldn't care about it. I'd just be like, well, no one pays attention to that. And then when my hair would dry, I would notice that my hair again would look like this. And that's just because I didn't pull down on the back of my hair and it just wasn't the same length as my hair in the first place and not making it like pulling down as I was styling it was making it look even worse. So if your hair is already uneven, make sure that you pull down when you're putting on your cream. What that does is elongate your hair so that your hair is not drawing up but rather being pulled down. And when your hair is wet, style it in the way that you want it to look when it's dry. So think about how you want your hair to look when you're styling it, especially if it's uneven, think about that as well. Think about the fact that when your hair dries, if you style it a certain way, it's gonna show even more when it's dry. So what your hair looks like when it's wet is gonna show even more when it's dry. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah. So the third thing that I personally did when I found out that my hair was a lot more uneven, um, and this is something that I learned myself and also that the stylist told me, and she let me know that I could start doing treatments on the parts of my hair that were damaged. Well, that didn't really make sense to me because I was already doing deep conditioner, deep condition on my whole head. So what I did is I started to add things to my deep conditioner. And with that, I mean, you guys already know, I was adding oils and herbs to my deep conditioner. So I have a few recommendations of the oils that um, I definitely know will work for hair growth and for any part of your hair that is not growing. So the first one I wanted to mention, let's see, we're gonna go with my growth oil here. Shine, da, 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 da. Okay, so this is the Nourish by Shantae growth oil. I used to make this all the time for my hair and what would happen is I would put it on, this is when I was really, really going hard. I would put it on my hair every single night and I would focus on the back of my hair, I would focus on the roots of my hair, and focus on all the parts of my hair that just needed attention, which honestly was my whole entire head because I wanted all my hair to grow. But I would focus a lot on the spots that had breakage, so I would individually put it on little spots that had breakage, and I would put it on the back of my hair, 
I also switched up a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll put down videos down below of other things that I did that you can check in my older video. But that oil helps a lot. So this oil blend has about seven to eight oils in it. And it's very nourishing for your hair because of the um, oils that are in it and it works like magic. So that's what I would do all the time to my hair and it did help it grow a lot. Oils and herbs really do help your hair grow. Another oil that I wanted to recommend, and you guys have seen this on my channel many of times as well, is this oil by Rooted Treasure. Rooted Treasure has the most pure Jamaican black castor oil that I have ever found. Most companies water down their Jamaican black castor oil. Rooted Treasure does not. They do have um, very pure Jamaican black castor oil. No, this is not a sponsored video, but I just wanted to let you guys know, anyone who's been following my channel for a while knows that I always recommend this one. Uh, I will mostly put this oil on the edges of my hair. I would even use it, if you go back to my older videos, I would use it as a edge control or like a gel replacement because that's how much I wanted my edges to grow because at first um, my edges were a little thin. They are not thin anymore, but they used to be very much a, thin environment so i wanted them to grow and get a little thicker and just get i wanted to be faster hair growth so i would use this on the edges of my hair um i felt that it was too thick to use on the back of my hair especially when you're going out this oil does not smell good so that's why i will only use it with my treatments and i will only put it on like before i go to bed and i'll only put it on the edges of my hair versus my growth oil which doesn't smell that bad and i could just put it on anytime throughout the day and no one would even notice. Another thing I wanted to recommend to you guys is jojoba oil or you can also use almond oil. Now I wouldn't say that I use almond oil a lot for my treatments and to grow my hair. I would definitely say my three top oils that I would use all the time was Jamaican black castor oil, my growth oil, which has castor oil and jojoba oil in it as well. Um, so, I mean, if you want to get to where you can just get it all blended together, this is a great recommendation. You can also just get both of them because I use them differently. So I do have both of these. I use them together. And jojoba oil is a very light oil. It doesn't have a smell to it. You can just put it on your hair when you're styling your hair um, as a sealant. Either way it goes, jojoba oil is not going to be something that's going to stick around on your hair forever or you're going to have like a huge smell coming from you when you walk past. So I really recommend that oil as well. It's very good on growth. It has a lot of great vitamins in it and also works very good to keep your hair moisturized. I also wanted to recommend that you do not use hair ties that are extremely damaging to your hair. Most of the time hair ties that have the metal piece on them or hair ties that are very, very small or just when you take them out, have a lot of hair coming out with them are mostly not good for your hair. It's okay to have a little bit of hair with your hair tie, but you don't want like a super amount of hair coming out and you don't want that because that can actually cause your hair to break. If you do not have a silk pillowcase or a satin pillowcase, you can use a silk scarf on your hair as well. Only thing about silk scarves and bonnets, they can kind of mess up your style depending on what you have. It can kind of like push it down or something like that. I don't really like to wear them a lot. So guys, what do you think about those tips? Do you have anything to add to this video? I'm pretty sure you guys do. I feel like that with natural hair, a lot of times you get so frustrated. You're like, oh my gosh, like my hair doesn't look this way. Um, it's important to know that your hair can definitely change. And if your hair is way too uneven and you just literally are like, okay, this is crazy. Then you are going to have to cut your hair at a more even length. And I had to do the same thing. Um, I want to mention that. I had to do the same thing. When I went to the Diva Curl Salon, she told me, okay, your hair is uneven. Um, we are going to have to cut this to be even. She did not cut a lot. She just cut it to where it was vis visibly even and that it could at least look and appear even so that you know it wouldn't look so crazy. And then when my hair started to grow more and more, I would go back to get a little bit more cut, a little bit more cut. So I really did take my time with my growth um, routine and with my transitioning all together. And I really made sure that 
I took my time so that I can get my hair to look the way that I want it to. But you do not want to say, okay, I'll just let my back catch up to my front. Because in all honesty, that's probably, unless your hair grows really, really slow, and if your hair grows really, really slow, you're probably not looking at my channel, so. <laughs> but unless you are having very, very slow hair growth, your hair is not going to catch up to each other. So you're gonna have to kind of cut it to where it can at least be even because you don't want your hair to look like that. You know? Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, thumbs up this video, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!